Another pass critique directed to Nolan could be again applied here. The sound. What is happening everybody? Welcome to Screen Realm. My name is Guillermo and today we're reviewing the latest film from Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer. First of all, I'm a big Christopher Nolan fan. It's the Nolan scale, which for me goes from gobsmackingly incredible to yeah, that was pretty good. Nolan's latest Oppenheimer may not reach the heights of gobsmackingly incredible for me, but hey. It's Nolan. Nolan's 12th film as director is his second based on a true story following 2017 war film Dunkirk. Here he places the spotlight on J. Robert Oppenheimer, played by Killian Murphy, the American theoretical physicist who played a key role in the development of the first nuclear weapon. It was a project known as the Manhattan Project, a history-making endeavor that was pushed by the US government when it became clear that the Nazis also had a nuclear weapons program in the works. And as we know, in 1945, the US dropped two atomic bombs bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, killing between, as per varying reports, 129,000 and 226,000 people, mostly civilians. As he has done before, Nolan uses a non-linear timeline to explore Oppenheimer's life and the Manhattan Project's development. Seeing as it's based on true historical events, there's arguably less a mystery here than most Nolan films, at least for those that are aware of the moments in history being depicted. Nolan's time jumping approach here, moving back and forth through history, introducing many characters and drip feeding us elements of Oppenheimer's elusive persona, it managed to keep me firmly locked in, invested to see how all these sequences would end up crafting this tragic tapestry that I could already envision. However, while Nolan's attention-grabbing direction did keep me glued to the screen, the info bombardment and the montage-esque narrative approach kept me emotionally at bay for a surprising amount. Particularly in the film's first third, Nolan moves quickly through moments of time, racing through character introductions and historical exposition to make us understand the scientific and political climate at the time. As great as it was to see the ridiculously talented ensemble chew up their scenes and have Nolan and his creatives flexing a way to beef up mostly talky scenes, I did find myself wanting the film to just slow down a bit and take a breath. Yes, exposition and historical aspects are a major factor for the story, but can we ease up on the info overload to gather stronger emotional context for our characters, particularly Oppenheimer? Another past critique directed to Nolan could be again applied here, the sound design, specifically the score. The score by Ludwig Göransson, Tenet Black Panther, which is admittedly fantastic, is relied upon perhaps too strongly throughout, and it's just blasted throughout many scenes. And as with Tenet, the sound design often becomes overbearing when it comes to the dialogue heavy sequences. Wow. He definitely said something important. I just couldn't hear what it was. I also found there to be an unfortunate imbalance between historical beats and characterization. Nolan has penned a sprawling, detail-heavy screenplay, but the individuals making up the story are a mismanaged bunch. As for Oppenheimer, the film depicts him as a fascinating figure, and I appreciated that Nolan wasn't afraid to paint him as a flawed man. He isn't exactly a boisterous, in-your-face individual. He's a bit of an elusive character with slight layers of complexity that call on us to study the performance closer. And with Killian Murphy, Nolan has the perfect actor to tackle this take on the man. With just a stare, Murphy speaks volumes from fascination to excitement to heartbreak to regret. Nolan clearly knows the power of his actor's eyes and he trains the camera on those emotive globes throughout the film. Murphy gives a magnificent performance. Unfortunately, the two women in Oppenheimer's life, Kitty Oppenheimer, Emily Blunt, and Jean Tatlock, Florence Pugh, simply weren't as fleshed out as I thought they needed to be. Yes, the film is about Oppenheimer, but these two individuals clearly played a large role in his life and arguably helped shape some of his movements and some of his decisions. With Kitty Oppenheimer suddenly playing a bit of a stronger part towards the latter stages of the film, it really pointed out, to me at least, that we needed further exploration of their relationship. A key family matter earlier in the film involving their parenting of their first child, it spoke volumes, and it's disappointing that it was barely touched upon. There are strong performances all around from this insanely talented cast. While some serve as little more than big name guest stars, there are standouts. Robert Downey Jr., of course, reminds us that we really need to have him tackling more dramatic roles following his time at Marvel. Downey is given a strong supporting character with quite a substantial arc to flex those acting chops. Among the many smaller performances of various sizes, I'll also point to Alden Ehrenreich and Josh Hartnett among those that stood out to me. Unsurprisingly, at this stage in Nolan's career, 
Oppenheimer is a technical achievement. The visuals are simply beautiful and, when needed, strikingly nightmarish. Astonishing work from cinematographer Hoyter van Hoytema, reuniting with Nolan following Interstellar, Dunkirk and Tenet. Nolan employs a number of fascinating techniques here, such as moving back and forth from color to black and white to signify perspective changes, and as has been highly publicized, the film is boasting ultra, ultra, ultra large format film photography, so yeah, the visual detail is absolutely incredible. To the extent that you're able to appreciate that though, does rely on the screen that you're watching it on. Also, it may be best not to enter Oppenheimer with an expectation that you'll be witnessing a bombardment of large scale effects or real world practical wizardry. Much has been said about how Nolan and his team tackled the Trinity test itself. I won't give anything away, but suffice it to say that while I thought it was an impressively mounted sequence, owing a lot to sound design, I wouldn't be surprised if there were viewers that left thinking, that was it. As for what the film has to say, it's important to tell this story, to explore these periods in our history. The film looks at not only the breakthroughs made by these brilliant minds and how their research fundamentally changed the world, it also delves into the politics intertwined with discovery and the human inclination for war. The film is sadly incredibly timely. As the film began to wrap, much of what Nolan has to say about mankind's ability and desire to both create and destroy and how that seems to be the inevitability of our nature, it really struck me. Seeing this film as a depiction of past horror and as a warning call related to the nuclear threats of today, well, this is Nolan's most depressing film thus far, and necessarily so. So while I don't think that Oppenheimer is up there among Nolan's best films, I still think it is a very good one and one certainly worth watching. I'm giving Oppenheimer three and a half stars out of five. And that is my review of Oppenheimer. Thanks so much for watching. If you've seen the film, I would love to know what you thought. Where does it land on the scale of Nolan films? Is it among his best? Is it among his less best? <laughs> Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all things coming from Screen Realm. Catch you soon.